let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Come on, let the power of let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Come on, let the power of the Holy Ghost. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Glory to God. Amen. At this time, amen, we're going to receive our greetings from our district missionary. Amen. Let's receive district missionary Vivian Whitfield at this time with our district greetings. Amen. glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. If they enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise and be thankful unto him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. As the that, that um, Judah was fellow would stand please. Hallelujah Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Superintendent Demetri Beecham, and our first lady, Vicki Beecham, praise God, and the church family of Duke Worship Center slash Hope, Ministry of Hope, praise God, and the whole district, praise God. Amen. We want to welcome you here tonight. Praise God. Amen. It's our revival. Praise God. Amen. You feel like patting your hand. Pat your hand. If you feel like shouting, shout, jump. Amen. Give God the praise. And we come to lift him up. Praise God. It's good to see everybody here. Praise God. But I come for one thing. Hallelujah. That's to receive from the Lord. Praise God. You're welcome. Welcome, welcome. Come on, put the together. Tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Amen. I want everybody under the sound of my voice. I know you just sat down, but I want everybody to stand up at this time. We are going to receive, amen, other than our district superintendent, the pastor of this house, amen, Superintendent Demetrius Beatham. Amen. Glory to God. Let's receive him. Come on, clap those hands one more time and give God a big old hand of praise. Come on, clap them fast. Hallelujah, Jesus. Listen, before you sit down, just get out of your seat. I know some, amen, a uh, little shaker, but that's all right. Just go give them a hug and tell them, I'm glad to see you here tonight. Just tell them. Hug them real tight and tell them, I'm glad to see you tonight. Just hug somebody you don't know. Just hug them. Just hug them real tight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless that one for name of Jesus. Bless that one for name of Bless that one for name of No other name. Joy in the name of Peace in the name of Jesus. 
but I glanced on Snapchat. But none of the social sites had my picture on and said, rest in heaven. I don't know about you. I'm thankful that tonight God has given me one more chance to lift up his name. And brothers two or three gathered in my name. He will be in the midst. the Lord one of my friends amen just amen text me just last month we was talking about coming amen to do a service here and sister Sophie he went home on a Monday and just took a nap took a nap and didn't wake up amen and I think sister Paul was saying one of her friends amen in her late 30s took a nap and didn't wake up don't you know that you are privileged to be in the house of the Lord on tonight? And sometimes you take it lightly, just come into the house of the Lord. But this could be your last time. And won't you make it evident, my God, that if it be your last time, be found guilty giving God some praise. The last time I seen her, she was clapping her hands. The last time I seen him, he was up giving God praise. And I don't know about you, but I feel like David, I will bless the Lord at all. us this week I don't know about y'all but the Lord has blessed us this week I don't know about y'all God has met us in this place this week and, and, and Sister McKnight, Sister Nikki if y'all don't mind just give God about a 30 second dance praise just give him about a 30 second dance praise just just, just give him about 30 seconds for leading us in our service. Give him a hand and praise, amen, tonight. Elder Gardner and our inspirational speakers, amen, on tonight. Say amen for him. Amen to all of God's people, amen, who have blessed us, amen, on this week. Thank God for our district coordinator, amen, Minister Marcus Davis. Give him a hand and praise, amen. He has done such a superb job. Thank God for our district missionary, amen. Missionary Vivian Whitfield. Come on. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, she labors at this church. Amen. Amen. And your sacrifice does not go unnoticed, Missionary Whitfield. Amen. I was talking to my wife on the way up here. You have worked so diligently. Amen. Whatever night you want to go to the convocation, your hotel is paid for. Don't you worry about nothing. We're going to take you. <laughs> We're going to take care of you, amen. We, don't, we ain't putting you in no, amen, Motel 6 either, amen. 
we get you somebody river walk amen whatever you want to go to amen amen <laughs> long time ago hotel six was our thing y'all uh oh look at that yeah uh oh all right all right y'all want to be bougie and when it first came out it was a good cheap hotel amen everybody went there <laughs> Amen. But we're going to take care of your district missionary and we're going to make sure that you have something to give and eat off everything. Amen. And we thank God for the mother of our church tonight. Amen. Mother Jackson. We enjoyed you last night. And Mother Jackson, you was in the conversation too in our car. And whatever day you want to go to the convocation, your hotel is paid for also. Yes, ma'am. It's paid for <laughs> You just let us know it's all taken care of. We're going to give you something you can go to, to the convocation, eat off of, and give whatever. Your hotel room is taken care of. Say amen for that, y'all. Yes. Last but surely not least, my lovely and beautiful wife, Sister Vicki L. Beecham. Amen. You were forced to go to the congregation with me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So you just got to be there with me. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have a good time together. You know, it was a time that people looked forward to go to congregations just to mingle with the saints. And that's what we're trying to reunite with the district fellowship. Amen. Just to bring in people back together, just to fellowship together. Amen. We're going to be that trailblazer in district. Amen. That will not focus on finances. Amen. I'm believing God, Elder Gardner, that all the churches who come with us, amen, that their church report, pastor report, every report is taken care of. They don't need to do nothing else because we're going to take care of those things. All right? Amen. I'm asking you, amen, tonight, amen, tonight is our last night of this uh, revival, and we've been having a good time. Superintendent Davis came on Wednesday night. He done, come on, we had some, amen, amen. He done an awesome job, amen. Superintendent Patterson done an awesome job on last night. I have been enjoying the fellowship, and we have another invited guest on the house tonight. The pastor of Greater St. John and New Zion Hill Church of God Christ. Will you stand and give God praise for Pastor Mosley Hobson? Come on, give him a hand. Come on, give him a praise. Come on. I want to make sure that I'm getting that last name right. Say that one more time. Hobson. All right, if I say it wrong, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Pastor Hobson. Give him another hand and praise, saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, we're going to be a blessing tonight. Amen. I asked you this week, amen, just so only fifth of you would do that $100. Some of you just about there. Amen. If you can, tonight, let's finish this off. If every person in the house, amen, if you don't mind helping us, will just give us a $20 offering. We'll be just fine. Tell somebody we're going to be just fine. Amen. You can give, amen, online. Those who are in our cyber sanctuary right now that are watching, you can give by cash app. Amen. That's on the lowest third of the screen. You can give. Amen. Those who want to give by credit card, we do have two attendants in the back of the sanctuary where you can get up and slice your card. Amen. They will give you a receipt. Just put it in the offering pan. Amen. The offering bucket on tonight. Amen. Because we want to be a blessing to our fellowship. Thank you, Sister Nikki. Those persons will say, Pastor, I'm giving that 20. Will you show that sign of standing right now? Come on. Will you show that sign? Thank you, Sister Hudson. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Pastor's giving us 100. Amen. Say amen for them, y'all. Thank you, Elders. Thank you, Elder Green. Thank you, Elder Davis. God bless all of you. Amen. Elder giving. Thank you, Sister Sophia. I'm sorry to, to just... Amen. To, to say that you, that you don't have to start at 20. You, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. I, <laughs> amen. I don't want to even insult you like that. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you. Amen. To all the other ones that are giving. All the other ones. Come on, stand. If your gift's not 20, maybe it's 100. Maybe it's 300. Amen. I want you to give tonight. 
And before we give into that offering, come on, Minister Green, will you lead us into a word of prayer while giving? As we bow. Father God, we just thank you on today for giving us the ability to have money to give. Lord, I pray that you bless everybody that give, and those who have not to give, bless them also. We thank you today, dear Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Come all over the building. We all can come, amen. Come, amen. Go ahead and give us some good... Church of God Christ in Rose, but come on up, please. Come on up. Thank you for coming. Give him another hand of praise, amen, for coming. God bless you. Yes. Amen. At this time, I'm asking you, amen. We have uh, the, the choir. Is the choir? The praise dancers. Ooh, they done shocked me. They done came back again. Ooh, wee. I'm asking the praise. They done such an awesome job on last night. And I want this anointed team to come back again one more time. And after they have concluded with the anointed dance, would you please stand and receive our brother in the Lord from Austin, Texas. Amen. As he come and bring forth the word. Would you give the Judah worship team, uh, praise dance team, a hand in praise. Give them a hand in praise in advance.
Come on, if you know that the Lord will provide it, come on, just put your hands together. Let's give God some praise in here. Come on, let's not be rehearsed tonight, but let's give God a genuine praise tonight. Come on, let us show him how much we appreciate him, how much we adore him, how much we honor him, how much we magnify him. Because the truth of the matter is, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, where would we be? Many of us know we should have been dead, sleeping in our graves. But God said, nope, that ain't the purpose that I have for their life. And he, amen, stepped in between you and death and said, no, nope, it's not their time. Amen. And I believe that as God has allowed for us to remain in this place, that we ought to be able to lift up our heads and give God praise. The Bible said, lift up your heads, O ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, let's just take a moment and let's do that. Come on, because I think he's worth Come on, I think he's worthy of it. Come on, I think he's worthy of it. If he's been good to you, you ought to show a sign that God, I thank you. Because when I should have lost my mind, you stepped in. God, I thank you. When I should have been dead, you stepped in. God, I thank you. When I should have just gone west, you said, get saved. Oh, God, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I say thank you. I say thank you. I say thank you. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't know my story. You don't know the things that I had to go through. You don't know the challenges that I had to face. And even on tonight, you don't know what it took for me to get into this place. And I didn't come to play any games, but I came to give God glory because it's due to him. Come on. I came to give him praise because it's due to him. If you think that God, amen, is a God that should not lie, he's a God that should not change his mind, you ought to one more time open up your mouth and say, glory! Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. We certainly honor the Lord for all of his goodness and for his mercy. It's because of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. Great is. Great is thy faithfulness. Let me say that again. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Great is his faithfulness. Certainly let me just give deference and honor to this great man of God, this set man of this district and of this house. Come on, none other than the superintendent Demetrius G uh, Beecham. Come on, let's thank God for him. Come on, let's thank God for him. We give honor where honor is due. Amen on today. And we certainly thank God for his lovely wife. Amen. First Lady Beecham. Come on, thank God for her. This is a ministry team, and I'm believing that God is getting ready to do some great things, amen, through the man and woman of God. We certainly always honor such a firecracker in the Lord. We thank God for the district missionary, none other than district missionary Vivian Whitfield. Come on, let's thank God for her. And the anointing that rests on your life, we certainly, amen, honor that, that God certainly has his hand on you, and, and we're believing that even... In the days to come, saith the Lord, that there shall be more signs, miracles, and wonders done at your hand. Because you love God and you love the people of God and you want to see that they be set free. What does it profit a man that they would gain the whole entire world and then lose their soul? And then lose their soul. And I'm believing that God has a word in your belly that God will use you in such a mighty way. He's not saying that he doesn't use you now. But don't you ever feel like you need to hold back. District missionary, don't feel like you ever need to hold back. You allow for the Holy Ghost to move from the depths of your bellies. He said, if you would do as the scripture has said, out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm seeing shackles being, amen, loosed and yokes being destroyed because of the word that's in your belly thank god for this church mother i believe her name was jackson did i get that right amen come on mother jackson amen thank god for her and she sang last night she oh god she she took us back last night thank god for her listen i want to just thank god for uh the vice president of our evangelism team is here today pastor mason come on let's thank god for him 
amen on today. Thank God for him. And certainly I'm excited to be able to say this. I am fortunate and blessed and honored to pastor um, two of the greatest churches in the Texas Southwest jurisdiction. I know that I know that you all think that, uh, you know, your church and your district is the best. But if I can, just for a moment, since I have the mic, let me brag about my church. Amen. On tonight. Come on. Would you all help us? Amen. Just thank God for the members of Greater St. John and New Zion Hill. Would y'all stand real quick so that they can see you? We're few in numbers, but we're here. Amen. To support. Amen. All the way from Smithville, Texas and Austin. Amen. To show our love and support and appreciation to the whole district. There is a word in the house tonight, and I believe that you all will be blessed. Amen. By what the Lord will have to say. And I want to get out of the way. But before I come, I want to ask for our praise and worship leader from Greater St. John to come and render us a selection under the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Sister Dion Arnold, would you all receive her? And then when she is complete, then I will come back and we'll say what the Lord has instructed us to say on tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the incredible I feel the intangible I see the invisible I'm looking for a miracle I expect the incredible I feel the intangible God I see the invisible the sky to what I can have I'm not ashamed to say the sky is your limit to what you can have God said whatever you want you can claim it the sky it is your limit to what you can have just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. One more time today. Just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. One more time. I'm looking for a miracle. I feel the intangible God help me to see like you see I see the invisible I'm looking for a miracle I see, I see, I see the invisible, the sky, it is your limit to what you can have, I'm not ashamed to stand on his word, the sky, it is your limit to what you can have, yeah. To what I can have God said whatever I want I can have All you have to do is believe and receive God will perform it today Not tomorrow, not 
next week but today all you have to do is believe and receive it God will perform it today Come on, if you know that he's getting ready to perform a miracle today, come on, you ought to open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you for all that you are to us, life, health, and strength. Father, here we are in this moment where we sit at your feet and eat from your table. Have thine way, O oh Lord. Minister to us in a way that you know how to will cause the shackles to be broken will cause the yokes to be destroyed in the name of Jesus Satan you will lie today and we bind your work now Satan the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus and the blood opposes you we believe tonight that healings and miracles and breakthroughs shall take forth God we count these things already done in the matchless name of Jesus Christ Hide me behind the cross that no flesh will glory in your presence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And every heart said amen and amen. While you're standing, grab your Bibles. We're going to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 to our virtual sanctuary. Thank God for all of you, amen, that are here and certainly appreciate your activities online I'm not excluding you you certainly are invited to worship and walk through this word with us and so if I said something amen that you agree with even as if you were in person you would open your mouth and say amen it's all right for you to hit some hearts and some thumbs up and even to type amen in the comments section because I'm believing that the God that is in this sanctuary is the God that is in our virtual sanctuary as well. Yes. Acts chapter number 4, verse number 31. Verse number 31. Again, we honor you tonight. Your theme, seeking the heart of God. Yes. Verse 31 says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. If, I, if you would allow for me to read it again, I want to read it from the Amplified Version because I like the way that it's laid out before us. It says, and when they had prayed, the place, Judah Worship Center, where they were meeting together because folk were on one accord seeking the heart of God. God said, I'll show you a sign that I'm with you. The Bible says that a sign of God's presence showed up where they were meeting and praying. And when you know God shows up, he has to do something. He filled them with the Holy Ghost and began to speak the word of God with boldness and courage you don't have to turn there but i'm going to go to isaiah 43 verse number 19 it says behold i will do a new thing now and it shall spring forth be seated in the presence of god just for the next few moments i want to talk to you from the subject god is shaking some things up uh I want to talk to somebody today to tell you that after all of the hours you've put in seeking God in prayer and seeking God through fasting and consecration, through all the hours that you've asked, where are you God when I need you to show up? And it seems like he's never going to show up. For those of you that have had hours of tears flowing down your face, 
because it seemed like your situation was not getting any better or it was going to change. I came to talk to you tonight. Those of you that were impacted by the winter storm or impacted by COVID-19 or impacted by the issues that are going on in your family dynamic. I came to talk to you that God is getting ready to shake some things up. The words that you've uttered out of your mouth were not uttered out of your mouth in vain. God help me. God heard every word that you spoke out of your heart, out of your mouth. And God said, I know you feel like I'm not showing up or that I don't care about your problem. But I came to tell you, he said, if you need an example, then go to Hezekiah. Uh, he said, go to Hezekiah because, amen, when he was uh, told that he was getting ready to die, the prophet of God came and told him that things are getting ready to change and work in your favor. And I don't know who I came to talk to, but when we look at Hezekiah's life, he postured himself, amen, to get the heart of God. God, God, I've done, amen, these things. I pray. I know that you have a time limit on my life, but God, if you would just spare me for a few more days, I promise you I'll do your will. I don't know who I came to talk to today, amen, but he's getting ready to redeem the time on your behalf. And if you believe it, you ought to open up your mouth and tell God, thank you. Your labor is not in vain, not in vain, not in vain. And as the psalmist said a few moments ago, we're looking for a miracle. And he's not going to do it tomorrow. He's not going to do it next week. He's not getting ready to do it, amen, a month from now. But the word of God said, I will do a new thing and I'm getting ready to do it now. If anybody, amen, knows that God's getting ready to work it for you and you can feel it down in your pinky toe, you ought to open up your mouth and say, do it for me now, God. So God is getting ready to shake up some things in our lives. And I don't know about you, but we have been quoting the word of God all of our years in church and not believing a word that has come out of our mouths because it's become routine and ritual to us. But I believe I'm in the right place tonight. Amen. That when you utter the words out of your mouth, amen, you believe that the words will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that which has been set out to do. Is there anybody in here that I'm talking to that said, Lord, I tried you at your word and I found out that you God help me today every time will never leave me or forsake me you'll do as your word declared you would that you would do God help me today I feel the prophetic utterance here amen I believe that God is moving the church moving the church into a realm God help me today amen that we come out of playing church I know that there's going to be some people that don't like me saying that. Amen. Because we've been playing church for so long. God said, here's what I had to do. I had to change the world. Amen. Move everybody into a place where a pandemic hits to where I can get them in their homes. Amen. Not to look at, amen, Nick and Knight. Not to look at CNN. Not to look at, amen, the words that come on the TV screen. But God said so that you would seek my faith. I don't know who I came to talk to today, but listen, there's some people, amen, who saw this pandemic as a threat to their very life. Saw this pandemic as a threat to their very life. But but I believe there's some people that are in Hope District that said, God, I know that you might have closed everything down. And I know that you might have pushed me into my home. But I believe that, uh, that this was not for not, that, that this was not for vain. But God, you showed up right in the midst of my living room, right in the midst of my dining room, right in the midst of my kitchen. And God, you made everything that was wrong right. And I don't know who I came to talk to today, but God is saying, because you have suffered a little a while that God I said I'm getting ready to shake some things up for you because you've been faithful over a few things I don't know who I came to talk to today, but I feel a heaven opening amen right above your head and God said I will pour out I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh I didn't come to prophesy houses and cars tonight, but I came to pro talk to some people who understand intercession. I came to talk to some people that understand word. I come to talk to people, amen, that understand the gift of God because God said, listen, this dynamic I'm taking the church into is not going to be tickle your feather or tickle your fancy, but God 
said there's true deliverance that needs to come to the house of God and I'm looking for some people that are willing to do the work is there anybody in here that said you can use me Lord you can use me Lord however you choose to do it it will be alright with me y'all don't mind if I walk this just for a moment the Lord woke me up in a dream not too long ago and he told me the church is in trouble uh, God help me because we've been in this season of pandemic and where some folk have really sought after God there were others that were in a rush to get back to what God delivered them from God help me today they were looking to get back into the sanctuary or into a place of comfortability so that they could hear their name called versus worshiping God. There were many people that were in a rush to get back to the way that we used to do things and not, amen, be innovative and see what God is trying to do in this day, in this hour. Can I speak prophetically to you? His word, amen, is coming alive right before our very eyes. He said in the last day he'll cause amen his word to go abroad and I don't know about you but where we used to be closed and we were only amen limited to the people that were in our sanctuary now we look online we got 25 people that have joined us from all over the world amen y'all gotta know that God's word is being fulfilled in our lives. And I believe that there's some folk, amen, that are in a place where they are desperate for God. I believe that God has some people in a place, amen, where they want to feel the presence of God. I believe that God has some people in place that want to see miracle signs and wonders take place. I believe that God has some people in place that don't mind laying hands when you need to lay hands. Is there anybody in here to say, God, use me for your service? Use me for your service. So we're living uh, in a day and time where the church is in trouble because we've been covered for the last 365 days of 2020. And the Lord showed me in a dream clearly. He said, if you look naturally, you didn't see a lot of mass shootings. If you look naturally, you didn't see a lot of the things that we saw when we were wide open before the pandemic. And he said, you got to beware because the enemy is mad and upset because in this 365 days of a man self shut in. Folks sought after the heart of God and God said, I'm going to bring to pass my word in your life. God help me today. And because you've come out swinging, because you come out with a greater anointing, because you've come out with a greater purpose, the devil is mad. God help me today. And as you see it in the natural unfold, we have a shooting, amen, this day, a shooting the next day, a shooting the next day, a killing the next day. So it is in the spiritual realm if we're not careful. The enemy's job is to come to and fro and seek whom he may devour. His purpose has not changed. But I believe I'm talking to some people that have sought after the heart of God. To the point to where when the enemy decides that he wants to show up at my doorstep. Ha, you can reach back in the word of God and say, though the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. You want to tell the devil, I dare you to try it over here. I dare you to try it. Come over this step right here and I promise you, you're getting ready to be in trouble. We're living, God help me today, we're living in a day and time now where uh, Hope District that if we are not careful to keep our minds stayed on him that we'll be pulled by the things that are dangled in our face spiritual warfare is a real thing if you don't believe that hell is a real thing spiritual warfare is a real thing then you should just go ahead and just, amen, turn in your membership and move on to the next place where they can coddle you and tell you that everything's going to be all right. But I came to talk to some people that have been in the fight and in the struggle. 
And you're just waiting for when God is getting ready to pull back the curtains and release, amen, in your life the things that you need in order to move forward. And I'm believing that the time has come, amen, not tomorrow, not next week, but the time has come now that God said, I'm coming to shake up some things. That I'm coming to shake up some things. And so therefore, it's important for you and I to be like we find in 1 Peter Chapter 5, verse number 8, we have to understand to be sober-minded and vigilant. Because the enemy's plan to go to and fro has not changed. It, ha- it has not changed. It, it is still the same. And he, if he can take you out and kill you, if he can take you out and destroy you, if he can take you out and steal from you, then he's got you right where he wants you. But I believe I'm talking, amen, to some people tonight that said, I've been seeking after the presence and the face of God. Amen. That I'm not getting ready to let nothing, nothing. I'm getting ready to let nothing. I don't care if COVID comes. I'm not getting ready to let nothing. I don't care if sick this come I'm not getting ready to let nothing separate me from the love help me from the love of God which is in God help me I wish I had somebody in here to say I'm not letting nothing separate me so what we see in the text tonight in Isaiah chapter number 43 we see that the Israelites in their good fashion have gone back and forth with God because one season they want to praise God and serve God. Then the next season they want to go and do their own thing. Y'all know how? Y'all know how we can do. Okay, I know I must be talking to some people that have been saved all their life. Right, come on, let me, let me talk to some real people that have said, listen, I've been in the church and, and I understand church. I understand God. And then at the end of the day, life happens and it pulled me out of the church. And I was only out of the church for a little bit. But then after that, the Holy Ghost wouldn't let me rest. And I end up coming back into the church. But I'm still struggling. Is there anybody here that said, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me? I came to tell somebody today, be not weary in well-doing. Because in due season, God said you shall reap if you faint not. You want to look at three people and tell them, it's your season, baby. Come on, say it like you mean it. It's your season. It's your season. So he says in Isaiah 43 that we see that the Israelites had wearied God because of their sin and their disobedience God being God amen because we look at him as only able to bless us with houses and cars and tangible things God is still a God of judgment and he requires for us to ensure uh, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice that which is holy and acceptable amen to him amen at all times when we find ourselves slipping when we find ourselves moving in the wrong direction we got to come back to God and say God it was against you and you only that I sin. Oh, but I like my brother how God is still a merciful God. When we should have been taken out and destroyed like he did the earth a year uh, years ago. Amen. Amen. He said, listen, my grace is sufficient enough that would allow for the love that I have for my people. To go forth just one more time. God help me. Is anybody happy today that God gave you one more chance? He he gave you another chance that that when you were in your mess and you were in your dark time, you were in your storm. Amen. You should have been dead and gone. Amen. He gave you one more chance. I dare anybody in here that's excited about the one more chance to give God praise like you never praised him before. And so as a result here in Isaiah chapter 43, because of the Israelites' sin and disobedience, God said, I'm not going to take them out. I'm going to give them one more chance to get it right before God. I'm going to give them one more chance to get their hearts, amen, right before me. I'm going to give them one more chance, amen, to turn from their wicked ways. I'm going to give them one more chance, amen, to seek me while I may be found. I'm going to give them one more chance, amen, to know that I am God. I'm going to give them one more chance. My word to them and my promise to them is that, listen, if you would, amen, like Second Chronicles, which is one of your three scriptures, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, there. 
I don't know who I came to talk to, but you're getting ready to get a thin blessing. Help me today. Amen. In here. It's not getting ready to be delayed. It's getting ready to happen right now. You want to open up your mouth and say, thank you. Turn from their wicked ways then. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. God help me. Judah district, you in good ground here. Uh, God help me. Amen. You in good ground. And I'm getting ready to prophesy what he prophesied. Amen. To Joshua. And I wish I had about 15 people that did not mind moving in the act of faith. He said, Joshua, every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon. He said, I'll give it to you. If you believe that God has given you some things in this season, you want to move from your seat and claim your property. Amen. And give God glory because what he said in his word, he's able to bring it to pass. If you believe it, you want to clap your hands and tell him thank you. In the spirit realm, when you took your step, uh, what you were saying was you were saying bye-bye to depression. Uh, you were saying bye-bye to addiction. Uh, you were saying bye-bye to heartache. Uh, you were saying bye-bye to disappointment. Uh, you were saying bye-bye to, amen, ill feelings. You were saying bye-bye to yesterday. You were saying bye-bye to the old you. And you were saying, God, I receive what you have for me in this hour and in this season. You want to clap your hands real quick and tell the Lord, thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Be seated. He said to them in Isaiah chapter 43, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. I'm getting ready to do it now. Why? Because what we see in the book of Lamentation, chapter number three, he says, it is of the Lord's mercy. That we are not consumed. Uh, his favor is yet round about us. I know that people say that favor ain't fair. At the end of the day, favor is good. Because in the season, God help me, I feel a prophetic utterance. Because in the season where he's taking us, there's a lot of people that are going to be watching. There's a lot of people that are going to be naysaying and saying that is not going to come to pass and is not going to happen. But I came to bind the hand of the enemy now because God said in this next season, it's getting ready to be bigger. It's getting ready to be greater. It's getting ready to be, oh God, help me today. Amen. A magnitude in such a manner. Amen. That God said, I'm getting ready to change the whole dynamic of the city because of what's getting ready to happen under my glory. If you believe that God, amen, if you believe that God is getting ready to change, amen, the atmosphere of your dynamic, you ought to tell God, thank you. I hear the Lord saying that as your leader is blessed, as, amen, things begin to be released in his life, amen, it has to flow downward. God help me. Thank God for gravity. Amen. As the God, amen, that we serve begins to bless the man of God, as he begins to show favor to the man of God, you can bet believe that it's getting ready to trickle down to your house. Is there anybody in here that's desperate enough to say, God, I don't want to miss the movement. I don't want to miss the place. I want to be where you called me to be because when you start blessing him with millions of dollars, when you start blessing him with acres of property, when you start blessing him with a special gift and a greater anointing, I want to feel your presence over me. The Bible said, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brother to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil that ran down from the head down to the beard and even to the skirts of his garment. I came to tell somebody today that even life forevermore is getting ready to come your way. First lady, amen, at night, you anoint your house. You anoint every room. You anoint your yard because the devil don't like what God is doing through your ministry. But I speak into your life and I say you shall live and not die and declare the word of the Lord. If you can clap your hands, you can believe it for her. Come on, do that right now. Y'all playing with it. Y'all not trying to be blessed. I said, if you can believe it for her, 
clap your hands because it's coming your way It's coming. It's coming. I told you. I had to get that out of my spirit, but God's not getting ready to just prophesy to you and speak to you about the tangible things of life. Because God is looking for some people that can move in the spirit realm. He's looking for some people that can tap into a place in God that it will give you a John experience. God help me today. As John was taken to the house of Patmos, he began to see some things that God began to show him. And I'm believing that God is transforming us. God, let me do it the way that he told me. He's shifting us in this hour. To be able to see some things that, uh, that the enemy is doing before it even happens. Man of God, I don't know you. I don't know you either. In terms of we hanging out together. But as y'all were going forth today in ministry, I heard the Lord say to me, stay close to your pastor. Stay close to your leader. But watch this, what he's getting ready to do for you is he's getting ready to elevate you into another realm and another dimension in him. Watch this, because your words have power. They're seasoned with salt. There's an authority that comes when you open your mouth that the devil don't like. But it's don't, it doesn't matter about the devil because at the end of the day, amen, he's right where the Bible told him that he need to be. And that's right under our feet. But there's an anointing, God help me today, that's getting ready to be released on your life because of the elevation that's getting ready to happen from your leader. Amen. That when he goes into the boardrooms and, and he goes into the governor's office and, and he goes into, amen, the city hall and he goes into, amen, the atmosphere of astute people. There's going to be an enemy that's working in the atmosphere, but he's looking for people, amen, that know how to pray, know how to get into his presence, know how to touch his heart, know how to move his hand. And whatever you do, when you feel the unction to pray for your leader, I don't care where you are, you begin to lift up your voice and pray like you've never prayed before because that's warfare that needs to be thrown off from your leader I heard the Lord say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and I release an anointing over your life that God said that even as you're praying for the man of God that God said I'll take care of your house I'll take care of your issues I'll take care of your problems and everything I said everything is going to be all right. You want to clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. I got a feeling. I got a feeling that everything I got a feeling that everything is getting ready to be all right. I got to get done. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down.
this is heavy on my heart over here. He said, eyes have not seen. <laughs> Get ready for it. Eyes have not seen. Nor has ears heard. <laughs> Glory to God. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them. You pray tonight. That God would send you a word. <laughs> you prayed tonight that said, God, if you don't speak to my situation, I think I'm going to lose my mind and walk away from it all. But God said, I'm getting ready to give you back now the year that the caker worms and the palmer worms and, and the caterpillars have eaten up. It's yours for the asking. You ought to praise God. You ought to praise God. I got to go. I got to go. Oh, Shaka Dabasi. It's yours for the asking. Oh. The problem is. The problem is. That we confine God to a box and we say that God can only move at certain parts of the program but when I was coming up in church there used to be a little phrase that was at the bottom of the program that said the service is subject to change by the moving and the power of the Holy Ghost God help me and God said that your thinking is too small. You're afraid to ask God for what you really need, amen, in your life. And because you are looking at it in a small lens, God said, no, I need you, amen, to expand, amen, your horizon. I need you to know that I'm enlarging your territory. I'm increasing your camp. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God said it's yours for the asking. It's yours for the asking. Okay, y'all sit down. So, and so, and so, and so, he says to the children of Israel, he said, I'll do it now. I'll do it now. Not in the next hour. I'm getting ready to do it now. Not in the, in the next year. I'm getting ready to do it now. But that requires action on your part. It requires you to seek me while I may be found. It requires you to understand that you are a new creature in me. It requires you to understand where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be in the midst. It requires you to do something. Because when you have the faith to know that God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Then as the song said, the sky is the limit to what you can have. God help me today. If I may, let me just get ready to take my seat. But... As we look at the book of Acts, in the fourth chapter, we find the other end of a most familiar story in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, the Bible talks about a man who sat at the gate called Beautiful. The Bible said that this man sat there and he begged of alms of those that were coming in to worship. He begged to the point to where nobody, amen, wanted to be involved or in his area. That they would go across the street, if you would let me walk in my Holy Ghost imagination. That they would walk across the street to avoid coming past this man. 
And the Bible said that, listen, there were two men by the name of Peter and John that were coming into prayer. I don't know who I came to talk to today, but listen, God has somebody designed directly for you. Amen. He got somebody that will join in prayer with you. They won't talk about you, but they'll, they'll join in prayer and begin to intercede on your behalf. Amen. Because God has something greater for you. But I came to tell somebody that as they were on their way into the house of prayer, the Bible said that as Peter and John were coming into the temple amen they looked at this man that was begging for alms and this man looked back at them and they looked at him as though they were getting ready to ask him for something but the bible said that peter said silver and gold have a none but such as i have i give unto you and the bible said in the name of jesus amen he pulled him up from where he was i don't know who i came to talk to today i don't know who i came to preach to today but i came by the word of god and the authority and the power of God huh, to pull you up out of yesterday huh, and push you into tomorrow. Huh. I don't know who I came to talk to tonight, huh, but I came to tell you huh, fear will not be a factor. Huh. The Bible said huh, that he has not given us huh, the spirit of fear, huh, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Huh. I don't know who I came to talk to, huh, but God said this is your season huh, to come up out of where you've been accustomed to. Huh. Come up out of where you've been familiar with. Huh. Come up out of the place amen that you're comfortable in huh? and God said get ready to trust me for the next season in your life and the Bible said leaping up stood this man began to walk I don't know who I came to talk to today but in this next season you're gonna have to get your track you're gonna have to get your footing the Bible said he got up walking the enemy wants you to stay still, but I came to tell somebody today, get to walking, get, get to walking, get to walking. The Bible said, leaping up, stood. He began to walk. He began to then, that thing got good to him, where he began to leap. And then the Bible said uh, that the spirit of David jumped off on him and said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That Bible said that he began to praise God. And the Bible said that he went into the temple with them. But here, here's the storyline for tonight that God said he's shaking it up tonight. And when he had performed, God had performed the miracle through, amen, the man of God, Peter and John. The Bible said that there was those that were looking amongst them, the scribes and, and those that were in authoritative positions. They, they were looking at this miracle that had happened now at the gate beautiful and they begin to call, amen, Peter and John to stand before the Sanhedrin court. Is there anybody in here that's ever been accused of doing the work of God? Is there anybody in here that's ever been kicked and abused because you were doing the work of God? Is there anybody in here that's ever been talked about because you were doing the work of God? Well, I came to tell you that it's not going to be no change because as long as you're doing what God has called you to do, they're going to talk about you, they're going to kick you, they're going to spit on you, but I came to tell somebody, amen, that yet at the end of the day, weeping may endure for a night, but I came to tell you joy is coming in the morning. If you believe joy is coming, open your mouth and say, thank you for joy and so the bible said that now the Sanhedrin court put out an APB and they said amen bring Peter and John to me the Bible said that as they went to them the Sanhedrin court began to try to find an offense against them I don't care what you're doing in ministry don't listen to what the enemy will try to say because the enemy will try to tell you that what you're doing is not of God but you got to be able to stand flat footed and tell the devil that God has anointed anointed me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. He's anointed me to prophesy. He's anointed me to lay hands. And I'm walking in my season. Baby, I don't know what you got going on in your life. But if that means I got to disconnect myself because you don't know where it is you're going, then so be it. I want to bring you with me. But the word of God reminds me to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us 
us. And the Bible said that here Peter and John have been summoned to come before the Sanhedrin court that they might be able to find an offense against the work that they were doing. I came to talk to Judah District tonight that the enemy may have you on display. The enemy may be trying to challenge your authority in God. But I came to tell somebody today, you stand fast in what God has called you to do because he said that he is not slack concerning his promises and whatever he said he's more than willing and able to do but let me get to my text so I can get ready to go home the Bible said that they stood before this Sanhedrin court and they tried to find an offense against them and they asked them they said by what authority do you come that you would heal this man that sat at the gate and the Bible said that Peter stood up and he looked the Sanhedrin folk in their face and sometimes we got to learn to stand up when the naysayers and the haters and all of them that are trying to stop you amen begin to get up in your face and say listen I come in the authority of Acts 1 and 8 that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you I come in the authority of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter number 3 and when the day of Pentecost had fully come they were with one plate with one accord and suddenly a sound from heaven came like a mighty rushing wind and filled them right where they were sitting the next time that the enemy tries to question your authority you tell them that God has created in me a clean heart and renewed a right spirit within me why because I sought after the Lord and he heard all of my cries and he pitied every one of my thrones is there anybody here that said God I thank you for hearing me when I cried clap your hands and tell them thank you I gotta get ready to go but the Bible said that as Peter and them were being accused from the Sanhedrin court there were some folk amen that were back in Judah district or Hope district they were seeking after the heart of God praying for the man of God that God would give favor to the man of God as they stood trial I came to tell somebody that the Bible said that yet after they deliberated for many, many, many hours they could not find an offense against them and then they had to let them go. I don't know who I came to talk to but the devil got to let you go because this is your season that God is getting ready to work a miracle and you want to tell the Lord thank you for working a miracle in my life I got to go now but the Bible said that when they went back to the camp where they were seeking the heart of God Peter began to open his mouth and begin to have testimony service and he said first giving honor to God who is the head of my life and the keeper of my soul I just rose to tell you that God is a good God yes he is I don't know who I came to talk to but you need to open up your mouth and have testimony service because the Bible said that as he opened up his mouth and begin to tell of the good goodness of Jesus the Bible said that the company heard what was going on and they began to praise God I don't know who I came to talk to but you want to testify to your neighbor that the Lord has been good to me that the Lord has made a way out of no way that the Lord has turned my midnight around that the Lord Save me, fill me with the Holy Ghost, and I need the Lord to shake me in this hour. Touch three people and say, let the Lord shake you in this hour. Shake you until you're healed. Shake you until you're delivered. Shake you until you're set free. 
shake you until your children are saved. Shake you until your mind is renewed. Shake you until your atmosphere changes. Shake you until you get that promotion. Shake you until God makes a way. Shake you until the door is open. Shake her. Shake me, God. Shake me, God. If that's you, you want to open your mouth and say, Lord, shake me. I said, you want to open your mouth and say, Lord, shake me. If that's you, you want to open your mouth and say, Lord, shake me. This is my season. The old me is gone. Welcome to the new me. I need God more than ever. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. If you don't know, let me tell it like I can tell it what the Lord has done for me. I came to tell somebody that when I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, God gave me the authority to open up my mouth and say, Lord, I need you to help. Lord, I need you to make a way. Lord, I need you to come through. Is there anybody here that needs the Lord? Anyone here tonight that needs the Lord to move in your situation? To propel you into the next season? He's getting ready to do it now. Mother Jackson, there was a song that was sung some years ago. That said, don't push me. Because I'm close to the edge. Don't act saved now. Say, don't push me. Because I'm close to the edge. The song said, don't push me because I'm close to the edge which means that I'm here and if I get pushed something's going to happen the songwriter said don't push me because what would happen should not happen but in the spiritual realm I'm saying I dare you to push me because Jesus paid it all he wouldn't let me go over without a plan when he hung on the cross they said to him you can call on a legion of angels and they'd come save you but Jesus' purpose was to stay on the cross so that we might be pushed so that we can overcome and conquer fear and we can overcome doubt what happened yesterday is not good enough for where God wants to take you we spend hours beating ourselves up because of what happened yesterday God said that if you would make up in your mind to give your life over to me I'll cause your yesterday to be a distant memory Paul 
Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are before me. My brother, we got to keep pressing. Life is going to happen. But life in God will guarantee that you'll come out victorious on the other end. If you believe it, come on. And you got to mean this thing. You got to mean this thing. You got to mean this thing. The Bible said there was a man that was at the pool of Bethesda. He was surrounded around folk that looked like him. They were crippled. They were lame. They were disabled. They looked like him. And oftentimes we connect ourselves with people that look like us but won't allow for you to stretch forth and become who God has called you to be. And in this hour, this man who sat at this pool waited for an angel to come and stir the water that whoever would be first to get in it would be healed from all of their diseases. But Christ did something better than getting in the pool. He came to him. And he said to him, man of God, will you be made whole? My brother, that's my question to you tonight. Will you be made whole? Will you believe Jesus Christ is the greatest power and that he can change your very life? He can change your very life. Do you live in this area? Clap your hands. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. The Lord deals with me in, in strange ways. There's two areas I really want to touch tonight. Number one, God wants to heal somebody. Literally, he wants you to heal. He wants to heal you. Because we focus so much on the issue that we lose sight of God. We focus so much on the issue that we lose sight of God. I got some of my members here tonight. I was in Florida this past week. And while I was there, I was out, you know, trying to be young. I was playing volleyball with my niece and my brother and I went up to 
Try to be hardcore, first lady. Got caught all up in the net. Was trying to hit the ball multiple times and went back and pulled the muscle in my lower back. It's in so much pain. I was taking muscle relaxers and aspirin and Tylenol, and it seemed like nothing was working. I was talking to one of my members, and I said, my back hurts, but well, we're going to press our way. She said, you going to be all right? I said, I will on Friday night. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there's liberty. <laughs> God help me today. I don't have no pain. No pain tonight. But here's the miracle. Here's the miracle. The miracle is this. Is that we get our minds off the issue. And have faith to believe that God can. Get our minds off the issue and believe that God can. The Hebrew boy said, listen, God is able to deliver us from this fiery furnace. But if he don't, know that he's still able. You're here tonight. You're focused on the pain. You're focused on the issue. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for you. Come. Come now. Move now. Move now. Come now. Come now. I bind the hand of the enemy. Come now. Come now. Come now. The anointing of God. Inundate this altar now. With the power of the Holy Ghost. Come. Come now. 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 Come down. While you're here, come on. We still seek after the heart of God. Lift your hands right where you are. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Yeah, come now. We're focused on the problem, not the problem solver. God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. Come. 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 I'm talking to you. Come on. Come. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost, come. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost, come. 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 I'm going to lay hands on you. And I'm going to believe. The things that you believe God to do in this moment and in this hour. He's getting ready to do it. And he's doing it now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now. Right now. Come on. Those of you all that know the power of prayer. Come on. Let's begin to start praying now. Come on.
Come on, clap your hands. Let's give God praise. I'm done. The next thing, the next thing that God wants me to pray for is I'm praying for increase. I'm praying for increase. Increase, watch this, in every area of your life. Every area of your life. Because when we know better, we believe better. We do better. Do you not know, Mother Jackson, that when you seek after the heart of God, that the blessings and the favor of God will overtake you? We sing the song, he got a blessing with my name on it. We sing that song all the time. But do we really believe what those words mean? He has a blessing for you. He has a blessing for you. There's an anointing that's here. Let me tell you this, and I'm, I'm moving. I'm giving testimony because I want you to believe that I believe what I'm saying. I was sitting at my desk. I work a full-time job. Sitting at my desk. Happy at what I was doing, superintendent. Yes, sir. Happy with what I was doing. And my phone rang and, it's, and there was a lady on the other side and she said, Mo, we're creating a position and I'm going to be posting that job in the next couple of days. And when it posts, I want you to take a look at it. We hung up the phone. Let me tell the story again. I was sitting at my desk doing what I loved to do. Had no issues with the job that I was hired to do. And one day a call came my way that said, Mo, I'm creating a position. And when I post it in a couple of days, I want you to take a look at it. And he hung up the phone. Okay, y'all didn't get it. I was sitting at my desk doing what I love to do. Working in the area that they hired me to do. And my phone rang. And this woman said, Mo, I'm creating a position. I'm posting it in a couple of days. I want you to take a look at it. And she hung up the phone. When the position, I'm not going to tell the story again. When the position posted, I looked at it. Consulted, I applied. A couple days later, I got a call saying, Would you interview for it? I said, Yeah, I'll, I'll interview for it. <laughs> I interviewed for it. She said,
says, we want to bring you back for a second interview. I interviewed for it. And I said, here's my offer. Because after a while, remember, I, w- I mean, after all, remember, I was doing what I loved doing. And you called me. I threw my offer in there and they said listen we're going to do everything we can to get you this offer they called me a few days later my brother and they said my request was denied because policy says we can't give a raise for lateral promotion did I tell y'all I was sitting at my desk Doing the job that I love to do, yes. that they hired me to do. Thank you, that they called me yes. and told me to apply. And then had the audacity to call me and tell me that my pay increase submittal was denied. The lady called me and she says, Mo, you know, they told me that you was denied. But I'm getting ready to go another route because they think that that way was the only way that we had. And in my mind, I said, I'm going to let you think that this is you. Because after all, I was sitting at my desk doing what I love to do. A few days later, she calls me and she says, Mo, we're waiting on one initial so that we can authorize your pay increase for a lateral move. Did I tell you I was sitting at my desk? Well, I went on vacation over the 4th of July holiday and came back starting in my new job. With my pay increase for a lateral move. I don't know who I came to talk to today, but listen, God's getting ready to do some stuff that you didn't even ask for in your life. And God said, they're going to tell you that it's impossible. But God said, you keep on believing. And I'll make a way out of no way. He said, won't I do it now? I'll cause rivers to flow in your desert. I'll cause them. I'll cause them. I'll cause them. I feel, I feel a river flowing today. I feel a river flowing today. And I just, I just, I just want to pray for those. I just want to pray for those that are looking for God and believing God for the increase in the lateral move. God help me today. I already told you that you had to do was do what Joshua, wherever the sole of my feet shall tread, that will I give unto you. It's coming your way. It's coming your way. It's coming your way. And if you believe it, you want to run down here to this altar, amen, and believe God, giving him praise that God's getting ready to bring increase to your life. He's getting ready to bring it. He's getting ready to bring it. It's impossible now. It's impossible to man, but with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are, all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. possible. I'm believing it now. I'm believing it now. In the name of Jesus, I'm believing it now. It's already done.
começou. Come on, if you're a preacher in this ministry, I need you to come here now. Come, come move now. Come move now. I need somebody to touch this man's feet. I need one person to grab one hand and another person to grab another hand. Come on, somebody stand behind him. Because there's getting ready to be a headship. A flowing from the headship. There's a great shift that's coming. There's a great transformation that's coming in this in this hour and we pray that the blood of Jesus would cover from the top of his head down to the sole of his feet in the name of Jesus that in this season wherever he goes favor shall follow come on men of God intercede now come on intercede now Intercede now. In the name of Jesus, intercede now. We give him glory. We give him honor. In Jesus' name. One more thing. Come here, first lady. Don't go nowhere. Because this is covenant. Come wrap your arms around your husband. Y'all behave. Come on. Come on, this is covenant. 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 And because you supported the man of God's vision, God said dreams are coming your way. Visions are coming your way. The ideas that you had they shall come to pass. It's not too hard for God. It's not too hard for God. This is covenant. And as I move one, I'm moving you both in the spirit realm. Covenant's coming. Come on, if you believe it for your leader, you ought to give God praise in here. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's bless God in here. Whoa. I got to praise, I got to praise, and I got to get it out. I got to praise, I got to praise, I got to praise, and I got Real quick, I want you to get a gift in your hand. Tonight, I want you to be a blessing to this word that has come to this house. God is shaking some things up. And he's doing it now. I came to be a blessing tonight to this ministry. And I want everybody tonight to get your best seed in your hand. Come on, I need a seed of faith according to your level of faith. That whatever God has impressed upon your heart. Whatever God has impressed upon your heart tonight. I want you to sow this seed in faith believing that God is going to give you a harvest stay right there come on I'm blessing the seed tonight with a hundred dollars I gave a hundred dollars in the public offering I'm giving it again tonight because I have confidence to believe that God is going to do what his word declared that he would do so I want you to get your best seed get your best seed in your hand tonight get your best seed get your best seed now I want everybody from all over the room I want you to come I want you to come and as you're coming I want you to praise God give God glory because he loves a cheerful giver amen and he wants amen tonight that you to know that as you sow this seed into good ground that it's going to return back to you some 30 60 and even a hundred fold 
I'm believing God for the greater. Come on, would you come? From all over the room, would you come? Come on, we're bringing our seed now. Come on.